Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to start carving your block. You guys can see that I have both the blocks that I did in the transfer demo that I did for the design. Um, but I also have a couple other ones here in front of me. I've got this one. So this material is gonna be more like what you're going to carve out of. It's super soft. I'm gonna show you the difference between this. It's called easy cut, right? It's like a rubber stamp kind of block, right? If I bent it, you know, it's gonna deteriorate. So in the presentation, I listed a bunch of different things that can be used to relief cut and make blocks. Um, but this is probably one of the easier things to cut into when you're first learning. Is it super durable? No, over time it'll start to crack and break. But for what we're doing, you know, it's good, right? So this is one that I've had before. Um, I, you know, I make a lot of prints in my own work, but you guys can see that, you know, there are a little bit of cracks and bumps in the road. So it's not the most archival thing, but I've printed this like over, you know, a couple dozen times um, and it works just fine, right? So, you know, when I say it's not archival, you're not gonna get hundreds of prints out of it, but you're still gonna get quite a few, right? So I also have the unmounted linoleum. The linoleum usually has like some kind of woven back to it. This is a lot more sturdy. Um, I have linoleum blocks that, you know, I had when I was an undergrad, which is many years ago, but this is going to be more durable, but it's also that much more difficult to carve into, right? So I'm going to show you how to use these, carve into those, and you can see I took one of my little square designs and I'm just going to kind of carve in a simple design. Squares will tessellate, right? Most geometric shapes will fit nicely into a pattern, but this is um, a liner cutter, right? So you guys can see I just unscrewed the back. That's where I keep all my blades. You guys will be using something similar. Now, all of your liner cutters might not have all of these blades, but they, they should for the most part. The ones I use the most part is gonna be this one with the little, the smallest kind of V, v tip. They have a deeper V tip, like a rectangle or like a little like crenellation one, um, and then a U-shaped one, right? So the big ones are really great for moving a lot of material. Right, so more some of the open areas. I use this one a lot to go around all the lines that, you know, of a design. So for the interior of this, I'm definitely gonna use this one to go around all the details. I'll also use it to go around the edges at least once. Um, and then, you know, take a bigger one to kind of clean up any, you know, lots of space. So those bigger areas, you know, the bigger the blade, the more removal you can do. Um, you also have this one, it's kind of shaped like a leaf blade. This is good for cutting your blocks apart. Some people will use this to kind of cut along the line with the handle, not just by itself. Um, I kind of think that's an unnecessary step, especially with this easy cut block. You're definitely not going to use this one because it's just going to kind of chew up the rubber a little bit more, right? So you have the silver chuck at the top. You twist. If it gets stuck, sometimes they do. These things can come apart and you can kind of like clean them and look at them. But you guys can see that, you know, when it's tightened all the way, this little ball at the top, this is where the curve end part of the blade goes. So I'm going to loosen that up. I'm going to stick this so you have this little, it should only fit one way, right? So you have to loosen up quite a bit and then you twist to the left to tighten. And you don't want to be able to pull it out, right? So you do want to twist it quite a bit. If any are ever stuck, you know, ask me, get a piece of like towel or something to give you a little bit more grip. Um, but they can get stuck. It happens, right? So if they're really old or they're just finicky, just, you know, let someone know. So easy cut blocks, they're really, they carve like butter. So a couple safety tools, never, ever, ever cut towards yourself, right? I have a beautiful scar on my thumb that is permanent, right? These are V-shaped blades. They're gonna make V-shaped holes in people, right? So the small one won't do a lot of damage, but these big ones will. Um, you're talking about stitches, right? So, you know, don't cut towards yourself and it helps to keep your non-cutting hand to the back side, right? So if you can hold it, I know this is a really tiny block, but this is all that I had in my studio left over from these guys. I'm just gonna show you. So it doesn't take, this is just kind of gliding across the surface. You can see it made a little dent, just barely pushing. You don't need to remove a lot of material for this to make it work as far as like a relief, right? So this kind of material is fine because even like a scratch and a lino cut will still print as a scratch, right? So, you know, I'm not using a whole lot of effort to kind of push forward. If you're doing curves, never kind of, it's not gonna be helpful to rotate this because what's gonna happen is you're gonna go right into your hand. Ask me how I know, right? That's exactly how I got my scar. 
but it helps to rotate the block. So go slow. So if you're doing a really twisty curve, you can do a little bit at a time, kind of pick up, and then go the other way, right? So each of you is gonna have a much larger piece of this stuff. Um, and so, you know, you don't have to make your block very big to get the tessellation because your paper is not gonna be very big, right? So you can cook this down to size. This is like maybe one and a half inches. This is two inches by two inches, right? So they're really small, but that means your print's gonna be about that size, right? So if you're doing a tessellation, that's something to think about the size and scale of your work, right? So this cuts like butter. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like I can just like, whip right through. So I'm going to show you what the other blades look like, just at least one. This is the big, the deeper V. I prefer the one that looks like a square or the U-shaped one to remove like a lot of material. Um, but especially when you get to the edge, you just got to be really careful. Always pushing forward away from your body. You guys can see that like I'm having no problem now. See how deep that groove is? That's unnecessary, right? You guys don't, this is perfect. You don't wanna really move a lot of material because a lot of times people will work on the back of these easy cuts because they're so thick. Obviously not the linoleum. Um, but this is unnecessary. You don't really need this much space for your relief to print, right? So just to kind of show you now, if you're taking a lot of material all at once, say I don't want this corner anymore, just, you know, I'm not gonna try to get this whole chunk off at once. I'm just gonna take little bits at a time, see how I'm using the edge of my blade to kind of pick out. And the edges are always the hardest. They tend to break off, especially with these. That can be a good thing and a bad thing. Linoleum doesn't really break off too easy. Not like that anyway. So easy cut. So I'm gonna show you how to, I'm just gonna kind of quickly do this one. And when you're tracing over a line, it helps just to go right next to it. I'm also gonna have something called a bench hook, right? So if anyone ever needs the extra like umph to kind of go against, to cut against instead of if it's too small to hold, I'll have these available for you guys. So you can kind of carve out, you know, and have something to push against, especially until you get used to it. I do this all the time, not saying I can't get injured because I definitely can, but I'm gonna just work this line a little bit. Now I don't need it to go very deep, right? So I don't necessarily, I'm using the very small V just a little bit at a time. See how I kind of flicked that excess out? I do like to have my blades clean, so I don't want any pieces in my blade. And I'm just removing a little bit at a time, right? So I have a little bit of a curve here. See how it just glides? Makes my life really, really, really easy. Right, if you have like a very flat, like a square piece or something that's like a triangle bit, you know, just barely pushing the edge of this blade in is gonna help you make some of those more like angular cuts. That's also where you can take your like leaf shaped blade kind of pre-cut and makes it a little easier to get that material out. I'm one of those people I just can't be fussed. So I'm like, I'll just roll with it, come what may, right? So you can see that it's not taking me a lot of time. I also have a ton of practice, so you know, in the beginning, if you're nervous, especially if the tool makes you nervous because it is very sharp, especially the new ones, then just go slow. There's no award to be the first one done, right? So you guys can see I have a little bit of material I forgot to get out here. This is another reason why we proof the block, so if you accidentally miss some stuff, you can go in and clean it up. So. You can see that's the carved bit and I just have, you know, all of this empty space. There's another reason I like to put my designs in like black ink, usually permanent ink. I just use a kind of washable marker. That's why it's coming off. Um, is so, you know, it's easier for me to see. I'm going to see exactly how this is going to print with like a black ink or a colored ink. Anything that's black, that's what I want to print, right? So it's really easy. What I'm also going to show you, that's the easy cuts. This is what you will be using. You have all these fun little scraps, right? So it's pretty straightforward. This is one of the designs I did before. You know, you can get some really thin lines. It just depends on how much you can control your, your lino cutter, right? So, you know, I always say graphic in the beginning is a lot easier, but challenge yourself as much as you want. So I have this, this guy. This is the one where I'm gonna leave all of this space. I'm gonna slide my bench hook over for a second. I'm gonna use all of this space. This is what I want to print. So I'm gonna put don't cut, it helps especially if you're new to this, like this, this isn't gonna print, I can get that off with some water. But if it helps, like this is what I wanna remove. I don't wanna remove any of this, right? So I'm gonna show you, a liner cutter is a lot 
not a liner cutter, but a lino linoleum is a lot harder to cut into, right? So this is a bit, bit bigger of a block. It's easier to hold on to. So I am definitely use the bench hook for this. That's just good practice. Um, so let's see, I'm trying to figure out what design. I'm gonna do this design first. So what's gonna be easier for these two is I say always start with the details. This one was already kind of detailed, so I'm just kind of following in. Um, if there's a big open space, I'm not gonna remove all of this first on like the design block and then try the details. I'm gonna do the details first and then work the big chunks out because if I totally botch this, I'm gonna know not to cut this and just start over, right? So always helps to cut the details first. Now, if you're nervous, this is why we're gonna have practice blocks. You can do as much cutting on the easy cut as you want, but you know, start with the inner details because the more material you start to eat away, you know, the flimsier your block's gonna get. So you just have to work in that kind of way, like cut the details, remove the big parts later. What I mean by that is I usually go around all of my black lines and then I start to, you know, take out the big chunks. But really this is all about taking out the big chunks. So position my lino cutter. Now you guys can see that I'm using quite a bit of forex, right? So like I'm trying to think how to demonstrate. You guys are gonna see me do this in class, but like if I'm pressing down, like it, it's quite a bit of force to move forward. This material is pretty it's pretty durable. This this isn't gonna move very well. Right? So just slow and steady. Now around curves with liner cutters, you see how I backed my hand out of the way? Remember that scar I told you about? <laughs> I only say this because it does hurt and they take forever to heal. Lino cutters are gouges. They're not just like, you know, getting nicked with like a shaving razor. So I'm just gonna start going around my line. You see how I'm turning my block and I'm not, I'm always pushing forward. That's what you wanna do. So I'm gonna go around all of this edge and I'm using the bench hook to help me, right? Because if I didn't have the bench hook here, I'm gonna have to hold this steady from scooting forward. This just gives you something to push against so you don't have to have that much, you know, arm strength in your hand. You know, you don't have to use that much effort to hold the block and cut because the cutting's gonna be the hard part anyway. Now, I've seen people too, they'll rock it that's gonna get you like little grooves along your line. So while that's, you know, especially when you're starting out, that's fine. You see how slow I'm going? Why would you ever go fast with a lino cutter? It's sharp, it's pointy, and it's painful. Just go slow. There's no reason to cut your block fast, especially with the easy cut, you guys aren't gonna run into too much of this problem. If anyone wants to kind of, you know, I can direct you where to get linoleum. You can usually find it at most hardware stores, but Woodcuts are also very similar. You know, you have to have the right kind of tools and gouges. I use a Dremel sometimes when I have like a big liner cut project because I usually work in, you know, I work small, but I also work often large. Um, so, you know, if you have a lot of material to remove, sometimes just getting a power tool will help. All right, so you guys can see going all the way, all the way around the edge. Now I'm just touching the black line, right? Because I don't want to take too much off. That's about how thick I want my line to be. And see how it's hard, it's really hard to start from the outside of the block. You might like pick it away. Even with these, it's, it's a little harder to kind of start outside the block than it is just to kind of lightly press down, right? So just be mindful when you do get to the edge of your work surface or your block, it can be a little tricky to kind of make that clean jump. So when in doubt, just kind of stop a little short and just kind of work it slowly. All right, so I'm just gonna go around this edge. Doo -doo. Now, I'm a pretty, you know, cautious block cutter, right? You guys can probably see the tension in my fingers. You know, I am pushing quite hard. And I know I'm not doing a very good job of like the safety things because I usually don't use a bench hook <laughs> in my own studio. Don't do what I do. <laughs> um, you know, years of practice doesn't make me any safer but it just you know I have a lot more control just because this is something I'm more familiar with and you might have already done this so kudos to you but just slow and steady now I like to I'm probably not even gonna step up step up to a big blade after this I'll just do this little part because you guys can kind of imagine what this is gonna look like see how I just kind of nicked that around 
curves, just, you know, go slow. You can always like restart a curve. This is also why you want to work just a little outside of your black line. So if you slip and nick into the design, you can kind of clean that up. You can, you can work with it a little bit, right? So now if I am going to remove this bit, right? There's a couple ways you can go about this. I like to kind of take a second pass with the small one just because I like to get a big buffer because sometimes you see how that happens. Like it just kind of slipped into the design a little bit. If I give myself a little bit more width, sorry. Boop. Just a little bit more distance when I switch out my blade. Which one, which one? Oh, it's not that one. I don't really like that one. I like my U-shaped blade that I just had in my hand. All right, so switching them out. And this is a good place to keep all your blades in here, especially if you're working in like, you know, a dorm, the studio, just keep track of everything. Um, then I can just kind of push out. Now I will tell you, see how much more effort I'm having to use to push out with the big ones. Now this is again, a lino cut, just to kind of show you the thought process behind it. You know, the more material, the harder it is to, get, to remove. Right? So that's why I always like to start with the little guy and start with the small designs because even on here, it does take quite a bit to remove it. Like you just have to push and gouge that much more. Again, nothing ever that deep. You just want to remove basically the top material. Now sometimes you just get carried away. It's easy to kind of remove a lot, especially if these are really, really sharp and they should be if they're new. Um, you know, you just kind of got to go with it. But just removing the material. Now anything you remove, is not going to print, right? So that's kind of like the white space or the negative space of your page, depending on what color your page is. You see how I'm removing little bits at a time. I'm just kind of shaving off. Don't try to remove that whole chunk at once. It's just gonna, you might end up nicking the design. You might end up lifting up the part that you don't wanna use, especially with this. You might undercut as well, right? So people that dig too deep like this, like this is enough, this is almost too much, this is way too much. I might undercut and this part's going to get really flimsy if I go next door to it, right? So you just got to be mindful of that. But so I have this little piece. Now, when I do my tessellation, I want everything to kind of line up. So sometimes it can be hard to manage that in a square. So something else you're going to see me do when I go to print these after I finish carving them, I usually cut around this shape, right? So it's going to help me line up. And I usually do that with my leaf blade. Just kind of remove that whole section. Do, do, do. You can also do this with an exacto cutter. I like to leave a little bit. Another benefit to the bench hook is that you're not cutting into a table. Now, this won't be any trouble with the easy cut. With the linoleum, I have the woven part of the back, which is always so fun to cut through. But the reason I'm doing this, kind of removing that little bit, I know I removed it, like I removed that material, so you're asking, probably asking like, why on earth did you do that? For this section, I'd get a nice like distance, cut out, and then just carve along, and just cut the rest of this off and save it for whatever, you know, demos in the future. But this way, by cutting off all these little linoleum bits, this is gonna be a lot easier for me to register, right? Because I'm like, okay, that's the curve of this creature, right? So when I go to line that up with my block, I'm gonna know that that's the top head of this one, right? So it's gonna be easier for me to remember and like position my block when I'm printing if I kind of, you know, kind of mimic the shape that I'm working with. Now that's not something, you know, there's gonna be different people that think different things. A lot of people will just leave the rectangle and map out, you know, the registration a different way. But when you're printing patterns freely like this, I find that this is one of the better ways to do it. Um, so, you know, block carving in a nutshell. Really straightforward, pretty easy. Couple always rules of thumb. Never ever cut towards yourself, right? So any kind of free hand needs to be back here when you're cutting, right? Because these leave pretty nasty gouges. It's not gonna heal very well. And then when you're done, I never like to leave anything in the chuck when I'm working, especially if this is going in a backpack or a bag just put everything back, right? So, you know, it doesn't take a lot, and it's just gonna get you more familiar with the tool the more times you do this, kind of tidy everything up, and you're good to go, right? You should always kind of shake them, it gives you an idea of how many blades are in there. 
Um, but pretty easy and straightforward. Again, don't cut towards yourself, always cut away and take it slow, right? You're gonna have lots of time to practice. Um, but in the next video, what you're gonna see, you're gonna see a couple things. I'm gonna have this block finished and I'm gonna have these two blocks finished and I'm gonna kind of show you the printing process, which is really messy and so, you know, We'll go from there, but these are all things I'm also going to do in class, right? So don't feel like you're lost and you only have the videos to kind of go by. We're going to do this in class as well, and you guys are going to have plenty of time to work on carving out your block. So good luck.